and I have received registrations from more than 250 participants and it's good to see around 100 of you joining there today. The session will be recorded and the, share, uh, the recording will be shared with all the participants uh, in the coming uh, days. And on behalf of Department of Computing Middle East College, I would like to thank and welcome Ms. Maisa Dhanki for accepting our invitation to interact with the students and share her expertise with them. Cybersecurity is definitely a very hot cake these days. Uh, all over the world, the incidents and the, the, the events which are happening in the field of uh, security, information security is alarming. And yes, we have to be very careful. To talk about cybersecurity in Oman, the kind of uh, uh, job opportunities we will have in Oman. We have Ms. Maisa with us to discuss uh, regarding the same field. I thank you Ms. Maisa for coming here and interacting with the students and the platform is all yours now. You can start uh, your session. You're welcome Ms. Maisa, please. Hello, hi, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you everyone for attending the session. Uh, Insha'Allah on this session we'll get to know about a uh, lot of things regarding of cybersecurity and how to start as a young and junior professional on your career and what you are uh, hoping to uh, understand during this session and what sort of outcomes that you will get from it. So uh, I would like to thank the uh, Middle East uh, College, especially the Department of Computing for giving me this opportunity to help the young youth to uh, understand what is all about cybersecurity career path and how they can get the benefit out of it. So you may allow me to share my screen, please. Uh, I hope it's appearing for everyone. Uh, please let me know if it is not appearing. Uh, I'm sorry, it, you are a mute, so I'm not getting any. Okay. Uh, I just want to request, I mean, ask you, shall I unmute the participants because uh, I have muted them? Uh, do you <laughs> want to take, take up the questions now or later? What do you prefer? Uh, uh, I prefer by end of the session, we'll get okay. like around five to ten minutes to have like a live Q&A. Yeah, so, yeah. and uh, please, audience, if you have any question during the session, you can note it down and we can discuss it later. Thank you very that's, much. That's great. Yeah, you are very much audible, so please, you can start. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Bismillah rahman rahim uh, To start with the uh, content of this presentation, I will start with an introduction about myself. Then I will give you a, a little bit, uh, an overview of Oman posture in cybersecurity and where we do stand today. Uh, after that, we'll go to the Oman cybersecurity future professionals, which are you guys who's listening to this uh, session. And uh, things to be uh, remembered by end of this uh, session, and then we'll start the live Q&A. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So, who am I? My name is Mesa Saeed Alvanki. I am a cybersecurity assistant manager who is working in Ernest & Young here in Oman. And I earned my master's degree back in 2014 uh, from Royal Holloway, University of London. And I am an engineer, a telecom engineer graduate with bachelor. And um, during the uh, career, uh, I have been started in 2015 in cybersecurity. I was able to be certified in multiple professional certificates, such as um, Certified Information Security um, Officer, uh, Information Security Lead Implementer and Lead Auditor uh, in the standard of ISO 27001 and an IT disaster recovery planner. Uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. You can connect with me 
you can share the request to connect with me and if you have any question you can email me uh, through my email it's mesa.aldanki at oman.ey.com um, during my career, I have been uh, engaged with multiple um, presentations, uh, summits, um, conferences. I've been uh, leading a lot of groups in cybersecurity. And one of the most important achievements that I uh, got the honor with is I was awarded as a woman of cybersecurity consultant this year by the women in middle and cybersecurity. That was a great honor to represent Romani women in cybersecurity, uh, competing with uh, hundreds of candidates uh, during that uh, session. So Alhamdulillah, me and my colleague uh, Nahla al Bulushi and uh, Rahma al Barashti were able to gain uh, three awards for this event. Moving on to the next uh, uh, section of this uh, presentation where we talk about Roman poster in cybersecurity. So basically, where do we stand uh, here today? Roman was um, uh, interacting with the cybersecurity domain for a very long time, uh, but actually that comes when the digital transformation uh, era started here uh, where everything has to be digitized. So since 2010, there was a circular uh, that uh, uh, all the um, uh, transaction has to be digitalized, all the documents has to be digitalized. The lies, every transaction, every you know communication has to be through the digital environment. Here comes uh, the role of cybersecurity, where for the past uh, five years, Oman uh, has been earning a lot of uh, you know posture in cybersecurity across the world. Uh, we gain a couple of uh, good ranking in the uh, cybersecurity global index where they come and evaluate each country and where do they stand in cybersecurity, either in technical or non-technical uh, pillars. And we were able to gain a couple of, you know, good uh, position across and compete across uh, very good, you know, uh, countries who's dealing with cybersecurity, for example, Malaysia and Australia. Um, not only that, but uh, Oman has been developing a portal where it uh, uh, directs uh, a lot of uh, people who are working in uh, industry or in government on how to utilize cybersecurity in a proper way and how to distinguish uh, the cybersecurity from the IT. Because a lot of people are uh, mixing between cybersecurity and IT. Uh, IT mainly talks about the technology and how you are dealing with. Think about cybersecurity as a coating la layer that protects the whole environment, not only the technology, but the technology and the people and the process. So always think about a good uh, polished cover that will help the organization. Um, so in uh, back of uh, 2014, or maybe a couple of years later, uh, Oman National Cert was driving a lot of agenda in cybersecurity, uh, not only focusing about the technology and the government entity and the private sector, but also focusing about the individual uh, here in Oman, uh, kids, parents, uh, education, and a lot of uh, you know agenda has been uh, discussed during the um, uh, the the launch of Oman National Cert. So National Cert is usually a unit is responsible to secure the cybersecurity environment of a country. So each country all over the world they have their own computer emergency readiness team. So these certs are communicating with each other. If any event is happening, for example, let, let me give you an example that really happened a um, couple of years ago. Uh, one of the malicious activity has been happening back in the US. And when they started to uh, investigate uh, the root cause of that event, they noticed that someone is accessing the US um, uh, network is from Oman. 
So because of the uh, um, jurisdictions that is between the countries, so certs talks to each other, so we can internally deal with uh, the suspect person and then we can send the report back in US. This is how certs are communicating with each other where Interpol are even communicating with the, each other uh, if um, any cause of events. So CERT have a different, you know, roles and responsibility, not only securing the environment of Sultanate Oman in terms of cybersecurity, uh, but also uh, spreading awareness about cybersecurity in terms of if there is a phishing uh, attacks is happening on the national scale or even in the individual blackmailing, cyberbullying. Different agenda has been uh, spread through the awareness campaign. Uh, one of the biggest campaign that I was involved with was the uh, cyber uh, blackmailing. It was a huge campaign in collaboration with the uh, public prosecution, Idha Al Am, and uh, Oman Royal Police, Sharta Oman Al Sultaniya. So basically, uh, we were interacting with each other in terms of like receiving uh, some reports of uh, victims has been blackmailed, so uh, either female or male. And uh, we started to collect these data in terms of understanding the pattern, what is really happening on the ground. So it was a very hard work and it's so emotional because it's it's not dealing only with technology, but we are dealing with people life. So our um, actions was uh, wide and limited at the same time. How? Uh, when I was working with Oman National CERT, uh, we do offer the uh, services, but it's really uh, restricted when it comes to the law. So that's why we collaborate with the public prosecution or uh, Royal Oman Police, so they give us the permission if there will be any further investigation or some cases that to be directed to their jurisdiction to be taken to the court or to be taken to another you know, process in that crime. Uh, to one of the things that I would like to highlight uh, under the um, Oman National Search Service was the Digital Forensics Lab, Oman National Digital Forensics Lab, uh, digital forensics is like when a, a crime is happening, usually it's not about human uh, uh, blood being, you know, splashed here and there and you go and collect, you know, these samples. But also the technology was involved in that uh, incident or in that event. For example, if a crime is happening and there was a, like a body with a lot of blood and everything, and then they found a phone. So the digital forensics expert are called to come and collect the phone. It's not about just switching off the phone, but there are a series of chain of custody where people are experts are being reporting on the day they examine and report, investigate until the evidence goes back to the court. This is a huge, uh, you know, air, uh, area where um, people are nowadays are looking forward to solve some mysteries of uh, crimes, drug dealing, some bullying, even of blackmailing. Everything nowadays is being um, processing through a lot of, uh, you know, series of of uh, investigation. So uh, if you would like to know more about inshallah, you can just let me know and I'll help you with a few details about that lab. So as I mentioned here in Oman, alhamdulillah, uh, we were earning a lot of good uh, posture across not only the nation, uh, national level, sorry, but across the world where even we are uh, chairing one of the biggest uh, certs across the globe, which is um, Organization Islamic Countries CERT, where Oman is the chair of that um, organization, where uh, all the countries are uh, led by Oman and they discuss their strategy in cybersecurity and how they can progress and they help each other. 
And one of the good things that I would like to highlight is that the Inter uh, International Telecommunication Union has been opening an uh, office here in Oman, and they call it the Regional um, Arab Cybersecurity Center. It's located here in Oman, and it's taking care uh, of 22 regional countries. Uh, that is uh, across uh, uh, Middle East and North Africa, where they provide uh, cybersecurity services to help this country to reach the um, desired level in cybersecurity. So Oman is doing an excellent job in cybersecurity, and we are really proud to to see this progress is you know increasing day by day. Uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight that by the beginning of uh, by um, one of the uh, good uh, announcement that we received uh, by His Majesty uh, Sultan Haytham that he uh, issues a royal decree to establish cyber defense center. This is a, a great, you know, um, move for us to uh, do things more centralized and help uh, other. Um, you know, units, either government or industrial or even private, on how to secure their uh, premises, assets, and a lot of uh, things uh, under that center. It's, the center is under the progression. And uh, nowadays, like, um, they are doing some strategies and they are working hard to uh, present something that will be really um, uh, fruitful for uh, Oman environment in cybersecurity. Moving next to our uh, professionals here in Oman. So by pointing the professional that I mean you guys who's listening to this session, uh, there are a lot of questions on how we start, where to go, what we should do. This question was in my mind when I was in your shoe. So back five to six years ago, I was just looking for someone who give me this session to enlighten me <laughs> where to start. But I'm glad that, uh, you know, your um, uh, lecturers uh, are being progressing where they uh, give you these great direction to start uh, at your college where once you graduate, you understand what you are looking for. So. First, you need to understand what is cybersecurity is all about. As I mentioned that uh, it's not about the technology that we are trying to secure or um, doing the antivirus or trying to find a way or a tool that help to pr protect our technology. It's about even the process that is within the organization, the people who's working behind these technologies, who are developing these uh, processes, understanding what the organization need, what is their goal, what is their asset? Because sometimes assets, it's not about a PC or a printer. No, asset could be the employee himself. So we consider on how this employee will be an active um, key on how to protect the whole premises. Uh, one of the things that uh, as a young professional, you need to understand what does it define as an asset? How does it make it important to the organization? As I mentioned before, asset could be something tangible that something can be seen or uh, being handled by hand, tangible, the animal moose, or something non-tangible, yani, uh, um, uh, for example, um, contract, uh, for example, some, um, um, let's say, uh, great deals that is happening the procurement team is having some a challenge in bidding. This is an asset. So we need to think broadly on the organization, what is their needs. So this is the basic understanding of cybersecurity and what is all about. So one of the things that I would like to say here before jumping to the other uh, three um, uh, sessions, um, sorry, sections in this um, presentation is cybersecurity is not limited 
to anyone. Everyone can be cybersecurity professional. It's required just a passion, uh, an understanding, common sense, a little bit of logic, and that's it. Because we notice like a lot of professionals in cybersecurity, they even have no idea what is cybersecurity. And nowadays that they are driving the agenda globally. So this is a good message. If you are a uh, uh, graduate in, in science or you are graduated in business or in computer, if you have that passion towards cybersecurity, you can be the professional. But make sure that this is your passion, really. It's not because the money that we are earning. <laughs> no, it's about the passion that it is built inside of you to to work in an ethical way, to secure and to be part of that team who is working hard day and night to to provide something that is really a, you know successful to the world. So the next thing is to set your ground by feeding your knowledge with fruitful information and data about cybersecurity. If you type Google in, uh, if you type, sorry, cybersecurity in Google, you will have a lot of information. Some of the information will be valid. Some of them are junk. It's only about uh, data being and information being fed to the internet. So you need to understand what is legitimate and how you can uh, earn these um, uh, information in a proper way, either to register in a, a courses or being lectured by, you know, some well-known uh, colleges, uh, get to blend with uh, expertise, understand uh, what is uh, being an ethical, what is non an ethical tool to practice because when the words come cybersecurity, the first things comes in their mind is hacking. And I'm pretty sure some of you are like, oh, I would like to be a hacker. I know it's a fancy thing. I know it's that is something that you would like to put the adrenaline inside of you and try to, you know, do these malicious activity, but this has a consequences. The good thing that you can drive this passion, this adrenaline in a good way. There, that's why there is a, an ethical hacker and non-ethical hacker. So you have the path. Either you do it in the right way and you progress or do it in the bad way and then you get punished. So uh, there are other things to be considered as well. Um, the the path that you are looking for when you are uh, looking for this information. So as I mentioned, cybersecurity is not about the technology. Uh, some other uh, sections that you may be interested on, like uh, human uh, error in uh, dealing with technology. And that goes to the awareness session where you uh, develop your skills on how to um, deliver a message to the audience, how to deal with them, how to work as a social engineer, how to teach them to distinguish between uh, something is legitimate, something is not legitimate. Other things that people are passionate about in cybersecurity is the process, is how to engineer the process within the organization how to link the puzzles together, how to make things are operating in a smooth way. So all of these are interacting with each other. You should ask yourself which path that I would like to progress in cybersecurity. Uh, the third thing to uh, highlight is to start your career in cybersecurity and start earning your professional certificate. One of the things that really help you once you graduate, inshallah, and start your career in cybersecurity is to earn certificates. Certificates that give you a validation to do a practice in that domain. For example, ethical hacker to be certified, uh, a forensic uh, investigator to be uh, certified. As you, as you saw, my certification that give me credibility for me to work in the subdomain within cybersecurity. So some of the certification does not require any work experience. 
some of the certification required five years and above, and that's why is the reason of five years and above? Because during your um, interaction in your career, you will be um, opening your eyes very widely to the things that wasn't there in the book because you are dealing now with people plus technology and process. It's not something that is written as one plus one equal two or one plus one equal 11. It's not about that. It's about how you will be involved in that in environment and interact with the audience and how to um, uh, apply all the knowledge and all the experience to solve that critical situation. Because cybersecurity events are really quickly happening where can destroy a lot of, you know, um, technology in less than a second. For example, uh, we have some attacks can destroy a plant, nuclear uh, plant. Some events can destroy the traffic lights. When I say an event, I do point into cyber attacks. For example, hacking the lighting uh, traffic light system that cause a, a harm to the, the whole, you know, system across Oman. And we can see some, you know, car accident can be happening because everything nowadays is digitalized. So these certificates will help you to add a layer to your career where you can progress and achieve more. Once you earn these certificates, and uh, from my uh, perspective, I really invested my first three years in, um, in my professional where I understand what is my passion, what I would like to invest more. So that will help me even to identify which uh, type of certification that I am aiming for. The last thing is that uh, don't stop. Always keep progressing. Um, don't say that um, uh, I am an expert nowadays uh, because I know how to solve an issue. Issues are merging every day. One of the things that prove what I'm saying is none of us predicted the COVID-19, none of us. And the amount of challenge that we experienced was huge for us to digest. And the cybersecurity as well was a, a strong, you know, um, domain was in hunger of um, to deal with a lot of things happening digitized. Imagine that people who are non-technical being transferred to the digital world. And definitely there was an attack and definitely we received a lot of calls that I have been attacked. Someone is using my uh, personal email, my personal account. Some of the things has been leaked, important stuff over the internet, names went to the dark web. So during this, uh, what happened exactly that um, this um, year, it was uh, a positive year where uh, we understand how important is cybersecurity today and how this event, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, have been giving us a boost to work harder and harder to achieve our goal. So those people who invested their uh, 10 plus year experience, they were even having the challenge to understand how complex was the events of cyber attacks during the COVID-19. So please continue uh, learning, don't stop and uh, be uh, progressing more and more. So um, I'm, I'm moving to the next slide. So this is the professional certificates that, as I mentioned, that will help you to understand which one you are aiming for. So as I see here, we have an ethical hacker certificate. Uh, we have the certified in risk and information system control uh, on the privacy as well, uh, certified as a manager. And an audit, as I mentioned, some of the people who would like to do an audit uh, in um, uh, cybersecurity. 
some of them would like to go deep down to the forensics, as you see down, the computer hacking forensic investigator. Com uh, Compita is a security certificate you can earn. Excuse me. Uh, Cisco isn't providing some certificate like CCNA, CCNP. And these uh, two slides I will be sharing with you guys so you can go and click and, you know, get more information. Some of them are, um, you can uh, gain it online. Some of them, as I mentioned, required some uh, professional experience in the industry. Things to remember before we wrap up this session. Uh, when you start your career, you need a fellows uh, to be next to you. You need to, uh, to understand what people perspective. So the key point to do this is to network. This is a, a, a tip, uh, a guy who, who told me back when I was in UK that networking will open uh, a wider door for you uh, to blend and mix with other professional. And one of the things he taught me that when you are in a group of people and you are networking, try to listen more. The more you listen, the more you gain that information that you are looking for. Because when the networking happening in an event or in conference or summits, people tend to talk a lot, a lot, a lot, and you are not able to gain something from that uh, interaction. But uh, look into uh, the professional people that you would like to interact expand your profile, introduce yourself, try to sell yourself more. So that was a, a key point that I, uh, you know, learned during even my travel, uh, my interaction during the conferences, meeting with people. All of these helped me to expand my profile, not only in Oman, not only in the Middle East, but with the international um, expertise uh, across the world. Set your goals. I know when you graduate, guys, you are um, overwhelmed with a lot of things. You are looking for the highest salary. You are looking to the fancy uh, organization, things that will uh, satisfy you. And uh, uh, some things are, you know, you already pre-planned, but it's good that you re revisit your goal and try to start with the baby steps. Don't jump to the highest um, point in your goal. Gradually, step by step, try to um, divide your goal into a quarter base. So the year is 12 months. Every quarter, you set a goal. And that goal will help you to progress a step in your career. And by the way, one of the things that I really learned last year, uh, when you are in a professional position, it's not about the knowledge that you are uh, knowing about or the experience that you invested, but also the human side that you have as a leadership. So I have been into a program is uh, called Ignite. It's um, a leadership program help us to be how to be a cybersecurity leaders for the future. So one of the things that we learn about how to listen to each other, how to solve a critical situation, what does empathy uh, mean for us? Because sometimes when we deal with the client, client come with you know different personality how to be in their shoe how to understand their need what is about client uh, centricity um, how to be a good leader not a boss but a leader that I mentioned so one of the things that it's not only professional goals but um, self-development and personality wise leadership goals that you need to you know, get involved. So these things will help you to progress more and more. Be certified, as I mentioned before, is an important, will give you a credibility to work in, you know, subdomain within cybersecurity and people tend to rely on you because you are, you are being certified and understanding how to deal with things. Achieve your expectations. Sometimes 
by beginning of each year, we set our expectation and we slightly move the roof up to the top. And for any unplanned, you know, circumstances, some of our expectations are falling apart. So try to make sure that your expectations are يعني, uh, reasonable. يعني لا ترفع سقف التوقعات عالي ولا تخفضها. I'm sorry, I'm switching to Arabic. So uh, what I'm trying to say that don't make your expectation too high, neither too low. Make it on an average. If it is happening, that is an achievement. If it is not, then at least you try to walk on that steps. Uh, I think now uh, that was a wrap uh, for the session. I'm ready here to hear uh, the question from the audience and I hope you will um, get some good, you know, outcome of these, uh, you know, 30 minutes invested uh, in your, um, you know, precious time. So please go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Marisa, for your wonderful insights about the information security. And uh, now uh, participants, one by one, you can raise your hand and I will uh, allow you to mute yourself, unmute yourself and you can ask questions. And also I will see if there's any question in the chat box. Uh, Ms. Maisa, there are three questions from Mr. Yusuf. I will take them one by one. And uh, the first question is, which is, he says, what if the attacker is a computer? How will you deal with it? through AI. He means to say attack as a computer through AI. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I got the question correct, but the thing that there are a set of uh, techniques when it comes to technology. So the question is a bit vague. 